about our church so we can get to talk with each other and get to know each other. This is a, a good opportunity to do that. Also, I've been asked to announce that uh, the cottage meeting sign-ups are in the lobby. There's a yellow sheet of paper. Uh, don't worry about being a host for that. This is just to get people to sign up to, uh, to at- attend these things so that we can get to know uh, Pastor Jan and her wonderful husband, Mark, and they can get to know us a little bit. So please... Uh, Please sign those uh, those sheets, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a good time together.
this rock, I build my church. Upon this rock, I build my kingdom on this earth. I build my church. Upon this rock, this solid rock, I build my church. Upon this rock, you are the Scripture comes in Matthew sixteen thirteen through 20 from the Message Bible. Son of man, son of God. When Jesus arrived in the village of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, What are people saying about who the son of man is? They replied, Some think he's John the baptizer. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. He pressed them. And how about you? What do you say? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter said, You're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus came back. God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven, God himself, let you in on this secret of who I really am. And now I am going to tell you who you are, really are. You are Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to cut it out. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door, No more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. And yes, on earth is yes in heaven. And no on earth is no in heaven. He swore the disciples to secrecy. He made them promise they would tell no one that he was the Messiah. Word of God for the people of God. Last week as we gathered here, we... We talked a little bit about putting on the armor of God and what the armor of God was and how um, when we put on the armor of God, we are actually putting on the strength of God, which gives us strength. And so we talked about, um, and Paul, as he's writing this, writes this as if you are putting, the armor would be like of a Roman soldier. And so the armor represented that Roman soldier's um, gear that he wore. And so first thing was to put on the belt of truth. That is important if in the Lord's strength is to put on the belt of truth. And a, a Roman belt would have had pieces hanging down from it where you could have, have attached things. And then he, he suggested that you put on the breastplate of righteousness, reminding us that our moral and our goodness, it doesn't come from us, but it comes from, from Jesus Christ as we are, are walking with him is where we we learn that compass of our moral goodness and our righteousness. It's not our righteousness, but it's the righteousness of Christ. And so a breastplate would have protected all of the internal organs. It would have been worn in front. It protected everything inside. And so in this way, we are putting on that strength of God. Then we talked about how we needed to have shoes for our feet. And the Roman shoes would have had spikes or some thing like spikes on them, just like you wear for sporting uh, various sports, to keep your grip solid in the ground so that you, you didn't lose your footing when you were running so you could keep your, your foot, foot straight. And so we are to put shoes on for our feet which are ready to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are ready to carry the gospel of peace. And, um, and that is, is why we need our, the shoes for our faith. Then the shield, the shield of faith. Their shields were large, and they, they also protected all of them. But in, they, in how they were made, the, the hides on the very outside were soaked with water so that if flaming arrows came towards them, they were put out. 
to see we're putting on this armor, and so we're putting on our shield is our faith. We're putting that on each and every day. So we, we want to put on, on truth and righteousness and, and shoes for um, carrying the gospel of peace. And now we put on this shield that is our faith. I also talked about putting on a helmet. helmet was put on actually last. And the, the helmet was put on. And the helmet is of salvation. We don't save ourselves, but it's through the cross and Jesus' death on the cross that allows us to be saved. And so we put on that helmet of salvation and the sword that we carry on our side is the sword of the Spirit, sword of truth, sword sword of the Word. So the Word is our truth. So the sword is the Word of God. And so that is where we find, um, find our truth. And so as you do this, you don't put it on and it stays, it just is there. Every day you need to do that. You need to put on these these things. You need to walk in truth. You need to um, be in the righteousness of God. You need to be in protection with your faith. And so today it's appropriate that we talk about how Jesus Christ is our cornerstone and the rock that we stand upon, that we need to talk about that as part of being prepared for daily, daily life. Um, and so today we, we talk about um, upon this rock. There's a scripture that uh, comes from Ephesians that tells us a little bit more that we um, need to know about Christ as our cornerstone. It says, that, uh, it comes from the message and from Ephesians. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it, all of us, doing what we felt like doing. When we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat, it's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with a whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love. He embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in the highest heaven in the company with Jesus, our Messiah. Words that come from Ephesians reminding us it's nothing we do. It's by the grace of God that we are saved. And so Jesus, who was rejected by many, Rejected is the cornerstone that we build our lives. Now, cornerstone, foundation, however we want to look at that, a foundation is important in building. We know that if we need to put our houses or our churches or whatever we're building on a foundation, use appropriate materials. And our hope is that when we do those things, the building will be strong. We still see that our man-made things are nothing like what Christ can do as we see storms and various things happen that even destroy the best of our intentions and our creations. But we need to have solid foundations. And so just an example of a foundation not so solid. Um, a, we lived in a parsonage, and it was a very beautiful pars- parsonage, and the church bought it after... Um, and it had a, a room added on to the back of it. And um, it was a family room. And the, the family room was added. And I think in the building of it, they, they did some uh, shortcuts possibly. But anyway, they added this family room. And um, I would notice when I'd walk down a couple of steps in, into the family room, I would smell mold. And I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. I would just smell it. And it was always there in one corner cupboard. I especially smelled it. And there was a lot of, um, the person that had lived there before was an excellent carpenter. And he did a lot of oak cabinets and oak um, oak things made out of oak. And so it was very beautiful. But I kept smelling mold. So we called um, somebody that the district had used and to come and just take a look at this, this, um, this area, and so Jerry comes and he runs the water meter along our wall, and our one wall in our family room was 80% full of water. 
Now, that's not a good thing, and you might wonder, why didn't you see that water if it's 80% full of water? Well, i got to tell you that you can even camouflage water from getting through because it had drywall, and then it had paneling added to it, and then it had some kind of a vinyl kind of um, wallpaper added on top of the paneling. So there were many layers of wall protecting it from showing up that there were things going on inside that weren't so great. And so they came and, and what we, we had contractors come and all sorts of things to discover that the foundation never was deep enough. And the foundation was starting to sink. And they had this large fireplace that weighed a lot of weight. And so things were happening in the family room. Well, the first thing we did was that the, the wall got repaired. It's kind of like going to the doctor and they give you a pill, but they never fix what was wrong in the first place. Just take this pill and go home and you'll be okay, but maybe there was a root to the problem. So we fixed, the wall got fixed, and um, there was still, you know, we, we fixed the wall without fixing the foundation. The wall didn't leak again, but I watched. I watched gaps grow from the window and the space and the bricks. And I would report to the trustees on a regular basis, uh, it's getting worse. And you see, they didn't fix it right away because it's expensive to now fix a foundation that wasn't done right in the first place. So eventually, uh, um, they had to dig out around the foundation and put pylons underneath that they could raise up little by gradually the foundation so it would once again be where it was supposed to be. And those would stay in there to support the foundation that was bad. And so it's important that we build our lives on a solid foundation, not something that's going to crumble or give way or something that isn't going to last very long. That family room lasted for a pretty long time before the noticeability of the fact it wasn't built the way it should have been began to show up. And so that could be the same thing with your lives. It may not show up right away that your life is not built on something solid. So Jesus is reminding us that he is that solid foundation. He is the cornerstone by which we should build um, our very lives. And so the rest of that scripture from Ephesians says, that's plain enough, isn't it? You are no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all irrespective of how we got here. In what he is building, he used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape. So without Jesus, that whole process would not be what it it needs to be. It becomes a holy temple built by God. All of us built into it a temple in which God is quite at home. And so in building, God is building the church piece by piece, but he still remains the solid foundation by which we build the church. So if your church is not built on, with Jesus Christ as your cornerstone, it's not the right, it's not right. So Jesus is our cornerstone. And so um, not only for our church, as we build the church, which is the body of Christ, not our building. Our building will crumble. The church, which is the people, and um, the, the church of God, the body of Christ, does not crumble because of Jesus being our solid um, rock, our cornerstone. Now, there's things that can happen to us along the way as we are, are growing or not growing. Um, we can develop hearts of stone where God can't work in us anymore because we've shut off and we've become hearts of stone. We need to remain pliable so he can mold us and shape us and make us who we need to be. So we need to be, um, be pliable. 
And we're reminded, we see the cross, and we see an image of love, and we see our hearts. And so, God, the, the great love of God <clears throat> saves us, is our salvation, and our hearts need to remain pliable. And so in Scripture today, it says, <clears throat> Upon this rock, I will build my church. And so, we are meeting Peter once again. And Peter claims who Jesus is. I know who you are. You're the Messiah. And Jesus says, and now you are Peter, the rock. Now, Peter the rock is not the rock. He is the rock that begins the church building upon the cornerstone. So, Jesus is the cornerstone in which Peter, the church, begins to grow. And so, we have to know that it is Jesus as the cornerstone <clears throat> that Peter, as the rocket, begins to grow the church. And so today our question is, is um, where our own foundation is personally, where our own foundation is. Jesus asked a lot of questions in that scripture. He said, who do people say that I am? And they had different answers about who people said. And then he asked, but who do you say that I am? And that's when Peter, you are it. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Peter's um, statement of faith, his first stone in building a new church that would come to worship the cornerstone Jesus. And so he builds around Jesus Christ, the cornerstone and so the question for us today is, is what's your foundation in your life? What is the foundation that you build everything else on? It could be that you build lots of things on a portfolio of, of investments in what you have and what you work towards. It could be you build your, your, your foundation is, is, is built on, on, other things that are part of our life, but where we really need to have our foundation is in Jesus Christ. It won't disappear. It won't crash like the money market can crash. It will stay solid and it will be forever. And so our encouragement is that we put on the armor of Christ, we put on the armor of God, we, put in, we, we rely on the strength of God, we make sure that our foundation is based with the cornerstone, that Jesus Christ is our foundation. And we go from that space to live our lives. Anything that is man-made that we build our foundation on isn't going to last. It will crumble just like the sand will crumble. It will crumble. It won't last the, to eternity. So when you want to build something solid for yourself, you need to make sure you're building it on Christ so that it will last the test of time. It will last. The church will stand. The church that Jesus is building around his cornerstone is the church, the body of Christ, that will stand the test of time. So this week, just kind of ask yourself, where is my foundation? What am I standing on? And will it Will it hold me solid in study? Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you are the rock. You are the cornerstone of our very lives. And when we build our lives around you and on you, and we lie on you solely, you will guide and direct us. You will allow us to be strong. And as we put on the armor of God and we stay in your truth and we stay in your word and we trust in you, we are on solid footing. We aren't on sinking sand, but we are on solid footing. God, help us to um, understand and realize that things of man are only temporary, but you are forever. Your word was the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And if we want to be solid in our life, we need to make sure that you are the very cornerstone by which we stand. Lord, guide and direct us. Help us not to have cold hearts, but to have hearts that are open, that we can receive your words that can grow in you. 
Lord, we thank you for providing for us. We thank you for your promises that are true. And so, Lord, we want to build our lives in our church on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.